So on this New Year's Day, uh, we've been preparing. We've been preparing for this for a while. Today ain't just when we find out what the theme of our ministry is. Did we find that out weeks ago mm -hmm. already? And the theme of our ministry is the miraculous for the 2016. We are going to see, by God's grace, miraculous things happen in our lives and those that we come in contact with. We're going to see the miraculous growth in our ministry by God's grace. Amen? Amen. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. So our theme is the miraculous for 2016. And when we say miraculous, we're talking about healings. We're talking about deliverance from demonic spirits. We're talking about manifestation of the glory of God. We're talking about things happening, uh, miracles happening in relationships and restoration in relationships. We're talking about sight, physical sight being restored. We're talking about kidneys being regenerated. We're talking about healing from diabetes. We're talking about restoration in so many areas of our lives, and we're going to hear more, more about it. But we're talking about miracle. We're talking about miracles and finances. Amen. Praise God! Uh, miraculous things are going to happen by God's grace. Well, how do we get this? We get it by faith. Amen. We have to believe it. Belief is necessary to receive the miraculous in our lives. How, who, wants, who wants to experience the miraculous huh? in their lives? Amen. Praise God. Well, we can get it. Uh, by our sh show of hands, that means we qualify. We qualify because we've got to, but we got to believe it. Now, we've got to walk it out. Amen. But it's got to be walked out. And we're going to learn more about this through the year. But we're going to learn more about it right now. <laughs> Praise God. Isn't that good? Praise God. Now our text for this comes out of the book of Mark. The gospel of Mark in the ninth chapter. And it comes out of the context of a boy who is healed. I was sharing with a sister recently. I said this could be named after you. <laughs> that you're healed. <laughs> the sister put, put your sister's name in here. Is healed. It comes out of Mark 9. And this is going to be the foundation for our series. Mark 9 and 23. And our text says, and it's, I have it in our bulletin of the Amplified Translation. Jesus said to him, you say to me. He's returning back what the guy said. If you can. If I, if I, if you can. No, Jesus is saying, you say if I can. All things are possible to the one who believes and trusts in me. You're asking me if I can. Do you know you're talking to the Lord of glory here? Do you know you're talking to the Son of God? Do you realize you're talking to God incarnate? If I can. <laughs> it's not a matter if I can. It's a matter do you believe. He's addressing it. Now we're going to go more deep into this. Let's look down here at the seventh. Uh, let's look at the seventh. Look up to the 17th verse here. In Mark 9. Mark 9, 17. The 17th verse says, Then one in the crowd answered and said, Teacher, I brought you... And he, 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 he's talking about... He's giving illustrations here about how... Because he's, he's, he's speaking these words to the boy's father. He's, now we're giving some background here to what the context of the situation. Some background and context. Then one in the crowd answered and said, Teacher, I brought you my son who has a mute spirit. Another, he can't speak. You know, you would call him deaf and dumb. You know, dumb. In this case, he's dumb because... He can't speak. They used to use that years ago. And whenever it seizes him, it throws him down. He foams at the mouth, gnashing his teeth, and becomes rigid. So I spoke to your disciples that they should not cast that that they should cast it out, but they could not. Now here is uh, the apostles of the Lord Jesus who were instructed by Christ himself were having challenges casting out this particular spirit. Now, in today, what would happen 
they would do a workup on him in the medical community and they'd have a long list of codes of, of, of uh, diagnosis codes and everything like this. It'd be all medical here. If this was today, it would be the, the, trans, the, the, the transcript of this interaction would be a lot of medical codes and so forth that would happen. Right? Uh, but how is the father looking at this situation? He's looking at this situation. Uh, he realized there's a spiritual root to it. Amen? Amen. Praise God. Uh, there's a spiritual root to all sickness and disease. There's a spiritual root to it. And the father's able to perceive this. Now, if we went over to MCV and we brought this person with this ailment there, would, would they be addressing that? No. <laughs> they wouldn't say it's spiritual. They'd say, oh, this is, I was in medical school and let me, let me tell you what the, the terminology is and describe the terminology. And that's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. That's, that's good. Okay. That's good. There's nothing wrong with, is there, there's nothing wrong with medical research. That's all good. We can utilize doctors and we can utilize the healthcare system, can't we? Sure we can. We want to pray and release our faith as we're doing that. That God would lead and grip and drive in that situation. And would add to their capabilities. But here he's identifying really all sickness and disease has a spiritual root to it. There's a spiritual root to it. Okay. Uh, but disciples couldn't cast it out. Now, why couldn't the disciples cast this demon out? Because of unbelief. There was unbelief involved. That's why this healing couldn't come. And we're going we're gonna to learn more about that in just a moment. I want you to write this down in your bulletins. Let me give you something to write down. Uh, with enough faith, with enough faith, with enough faith, anything can be healed. With enough faith, anything can be healed. There is no limitation. On the healing power of God. With enough faith, anything can be filled. And even if a healing is, has, we've had a miracle in our lives, we can further walk out complete restoration in our health. With, with, with enough faith, anything can be healed. There is nothing that can be healed. All healing of every situation and circumstance, even physical healing. Anything can be healed. With enough faith, anything can be healed. Let's look back here at the text of Mark 9. And let's go down to the 19th verse here. Now Jesus goes right. This guy, is, it, is this guy concerned about his child? Yes, he is. He's very concerned about his child. I mean, it's, 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 it's you know, look, he, he throws him down. He foams at the mouth, gnashing his teeth. He becomes rigid. He's concerned about his child. He's going to get, that he can't function. He can't provide for himself. He can't, you know, do what needs to be done in his life. Now, how does Jesus immediately respond to this guy? Or respond to the situation? He says, he answered and said to him, O oh, faithless generation. What is the problem here? No why, why couldn't... They received, that he received healing from one of those apostles. Lack of, faith. lack of faith. There was lack of faith. Was it the lack of faith necessarily on the apostles' part? Yeah. It's a mm -hmm. Could be. But who is he? He's talking about, did the apostles have faith? You know they had faith. Yeah. Now, he's going to have an interaction with this guy, who's, who's this, this parent, who's trying to get help for their child. And he gives him the scenario of what's going on, and he says, oh, faith is right. He didn't say the apostle didn't have faith. No. But he's talking about what's involved here is a lack of faith. There's a lack of faith involved here. 
Faith is essential and critical for us to experience the miraculous, to experience miracles in our life. It is absolutely necessary. Amen? Amen. O oh, faithful of the generation, 19th verse, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I bear with you? Bring him to me. Then they brought him to him, and when he saw him, immediately the spirit convulsed him, and he fell on the ground and swallowed foaming at the mouth. Now, I remember in my uh, own personal situation, when I was in ministry, back in August, I went to the hospital to visit someone. And when I went in there, the parent had left, and I went in there to the uh, critical care unit, and the person was just thrashing about in the bed. And when I spoke to this person, they, they didn't quiet down. They it, it didn't respond. And as a matter of fact, you could say thrashed about the same or even worse. What is the devil trying to do in front of your face? This ain't going to work. <laughs> yeah. It's defiance. Show your so what I did was, as I went into prayer mode. And when I went into prayer mode, this particular individual... As I was praying about three minutes into the prayer, this particular individual went limp. And as I prayed about a minute or two minutes more, this individual was asleep. This person went from thrashing about wilding the bed to asleep in a matter of a few minutes. That's the grace of God. That was a demonic manifestation. We're just trying to show out in front of Jesus here. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Okay. 20, the 21st verse. So he asked the father, how long has this been happening to him? And he said, from childhood. And often he has thrown him both into the fire and into the water to destroy him. But if you can do anything, have compassion on us and help us. Now, I remember when I got that call or talked to that mother of that child, or of her child, of her daughter, that she wanted compassion. She needed compassion and mercy. Amen? Praise God. And she received it. She received compassion and mercy. Now, he had this ailment from childhood. What happens when we had a physical limitation for a long time? We become accustomed to it. And you can tell even religious people, even some ministers or even pastors that don't have that anointing to be able to address it will say, well, you know, we just have to live with some things sometimes in our life. You know, it's just... God gave her that for a reason, you know, to help teach her to be humble or teach him to be humble, you know. No, that's not. The reason why they make up those things is because they don't have the power or the anointing to be able to address and deal with it. So they're trying to make the people feel good. You know, make them pacify them. You know, you're, you're a doctor, you're a nurse, you, you know these physical limitations, you've, you've seen the x-rays, you've seen the MRIs, you've seen this. What has that got to do with the price of tea in China when it comes to the things of God? And the kingdom of heaven, nothing! Did Jesus say, bring me the MRI, bring me the x-ray, you know, all that? No! He, didn't get that. He, he spoke to the root cause of that situation. He knew the devil was behind it. Because look at that verse there, in the 22nd verse, and it says... And often he thrown him both into the fire and the water to destroy him. Who is the destroyer? The devil. The devil. He tried to destroy this child. This man, this parent's child here. And he says, but if you can do anything, have compassion on us. And sometimes when we've had illnesses for long times or sicknesses, a stronghold can be built up in our mind about it. That it can, we can't be delivered from it. Is that true? No. What is our text? All things are possible for him who believes and trusts in Jesus. Amen? Amen. Doesn't that include healing for this boy? Amen. Even though he had it from childhood? Amen. Huh? Sure it did. Does that same word apply to us? Yes. yes. Amen. The Lord is here to tell us on New Year's Day 
that we, he wants us to experience the miraculous in our lives. But the, he, he could say, but Jesus, I went to MCV. I went to uh, St. Mary's. I went to uh, whatever uh, hospital you want to say. And the doctor said this. My therapist said this. What would that mean to Jesus? Nothing. Nothing. Doesn't mean anything. Well, tell, he would say, tell your therapist this. Let me give him a word for him. Tell your doctor this. Tell your surgeon this. Tell your psychiatrist this. That's, but here's what happens. People let what the doctors say and the counselors say to build a strong up in their hold in their mind. And it becomes a block on them receiving. Amen? Amen? I know an example of a gentleman. I held his memorial service. And he prayed about surgery. And he didn't say he never got peace about it. But the doctor was just after him. And kept pestering about the surgery. And he said he just gave into it. And his son called me and said, my father passed away in surgery. The doctor said the procedure was a success. We just lost a patient. <laughs> that's the way, that's the way some look at that. It, I don't even know, I mean, we, we want people who know God. <laughs> and we want to listen to God, amen? amen. They're going to really receive supernatural healing. It's possible. Just like this, this boy did here. So we got to be careful that we don't let, because when strongholds develop in our mind that it can't happen, what is that also called? Unbelief. It's called unbelief. And unbelief blocks us from receiving. Amen? Amen. Praise God. But the father was desperate and he needed help. Let's look down here at the 24th verse. We know what our, this is our text, the 23rd verse, and it says, Jesus said to him, if you can't believe, all things are possible to him who believes. What was Jesus addressing there? He was going right at what was the blockage, wasn't it? Why the apostles couldn't heal him? Because there was unbelief involved here. Yeah, and in him. This had happened, think about it. Somebody, let's say somebody has an ailment for 10 years, a child for 10 years, 15, 20 years, 30 years. A stronghold starts to develop in the mind that this is never going to be dealt with. It's not in the, it's in the mind and it becomes a blockage. And that blockage stops us from receiving. So Jesus is dealing exactly with the problem here of why the apostles couldn't do it. There's unbelief about there. These people don't believe it. D didn't we read in Mark 6 where Jesus could only heal a few sickly people? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Remember Mark, remember Mark 6? He could only heal a few. Why? Why? You, you mean Jesus can't just do anything? No. Is God restricted? Yeah, he's restricted. Now he's sovereign overall. Why couldn't those people there with Jesus and his ministry receive out of, their, out of his ministry? They didn't, they didn't believe. Is Jesus going to come and make somebody receive? God is going to make somebody receive Jesus as Lord and Savior. No. He'll knock. He'll give you the grace to believe, but you've got to make a choice of whether you're going to receive him as Lord and Savior or not. It's nice that people will preach that you God can do anything. That's not true. It's nice to make people make people feel good. But the reality is, God is restricted to the point of our faith. If we do not believe, you can't receive, you're not going to receive it. If you don't believe, you're not going to receive it. That's the, that's the reality. If you don't believe that Jesus Christ died for your sins, resurrected, and ascended to heaven, and that you have to receive as Lord and Savior for eternal life, you're not going to get it. Right. You just won't get it. 
You can have head knowledge of it, but if you don't receive it by faith in your spirit, you're not going to be born again. So it's necessary. God is restricted in our lives to the point of faith, measure of faith that we have. So let's say that uh, Jesus was there in Mark. You know, we all know this. Mark 6. We've already, we, all, we all know this scripture. Or Jesus could only heal a few sickly people. So then Jesus, Jesus wasn't a true servant then. Is that because they, they couldn't receive out of his ministry? Huh? He wasn't the Son of God. He wasn't the Messiah. No. That had nothing to do with it. Because those people couldn't receive from Jesus, who was that a reflection on? Them. Not on his ministry. It was, on, it was not on Jesus. It's on them. So, because somebody doesn't receive from Jesus, it has got nothing to do with Jesus. He's already paid the price. He's already given us the word. What do we have to do to receive it? Believe. Believe only. We, just like that sister. She went to the doctor. You know, he's an MD, board certified. Goes to the doctor, and he looks at the reports. He says, I see you still have this ailment. She said, no, I don't. What are you talking about? I, 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 I'm looking at your, your, your reports right now. I got the MRI right here. I mean, I'm looking at it. I don't know how to read this stuff. I read the, look, look at the report that the, the, the MRI the technician wrote up. It's right here. She said, I mean, that, that, I'm healed. Well, look, I'm going to give you this medication. You need to, okay, I'll take the medication. There's not a problem with that. But I told you, I'm healed. She goes back to the bank and visit again. He says, oh, I see you. She look, he looks at the report. Oh, I see you still got this problem. Oh, no, I'm healed, doctor. What is this sister God? She believes. She's believing. She's believing. She's telling the professional what the circumstances are. Amen. She's telling the professional, oh, no, I'm healed. Oh, here it is. You go to the counselor. I'm going to be depressed. It's Christmas. No, I'm not. I'm going to have more joy than I had. If you keep listening to me, you have joy too. Come on to church with me. You get some joy. Amen. Praise God. You can rewrite your books. You can rewrite write a new book. Amen. How people have, have more joy during Christmas and New Year's than they ever had in their life. Praise God. That's what I'm having. I don't know what they're... I'm not, and I'm not receiving what you're dishing out. Praise God. I don't receive that. I receive this word from the Lord. I got more joy and peace than I've ever had in my life. I receive it by faith. Matter of fact, in front of the counselor, I receive my peace and joy right now. I release my faith for it. <laughs> Praise God. Next time you see me, I'm going to be so happy and joyful, it'll probably jump on you. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Then when that, when that sister did, she went back there again. Uh, she told the doctor, uh, I'm, I, I'm healed. Look, I'm looking at your reports. You're, they're still, I, I'm healed. I told you I'm healed. Well, you got to take the medication. Well, that's fine. I'll take the medication. I, I, I can go to Walgreens and get it filled. <laughs> that's fine. I'm going to pray over it to be blessed too, but I'm healed. She goes back there. One time she goes back to the visit, and the doctor pulls the reports out. Huh? <laughs> It's just showing up in what you got there. I've I, 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 I been healed. It just manifested. Well, it looks like I, I don't know what's happened here, but it's it looks like you're at a normal level. Well, I knew that. Praise God. I knew God was healing me. I just had to walk it out. It's manifest. Praise God. Do you know God, doctor? <laughs> I mean, you see His glory at work here. Don't you want? Don't you want somebody to work working you like this? <laughs> praise God. You can get over the king. You can get what I got. Same kind of healing I got. You can get it if you need it. Praise God. You can get over here and get this, this blessing that I got. I'm walking in. So that sister had developed to the point of what? Belief. And nobody was taking that away from her. And that's what we that's the kind of faith that we need. Let's look at the 24th verse of Mark 9. And it says, Immediately the father of the child cried out and said with tears, Lord, I believe, help my unbelief. So Jesus had got right to the heart of why this person couldn't receive. Because this child had walked in this, this person had walked this ever since what? Childhood. So a stronghold had developed. They had developed unbelief over this. And, and, and Jesus said, anything is possible to believe. And so 
the holy the anointing on Jesus revealed to this man immediately what his problem was. And Jesus said it in words. And the anointing revealed to him, he became convicted of it. And me, the Father, cried out with, with tears, Lord, help my unbelief. So what was the problem why he, they couldn't receive? His unbelief. That's why he couldn't get experience the fullness of the miracle in his life. Because it was unbelief involved here. He went through doctors and maybe counselors, and they had told him, well, you know, this is what the studies say. And I went to medical school, and I went to, I have a master's degree. And Well, that's all fine, but let me, let me tell you what's going to happen to me. <laughs> I'm going to be healed. I am healed. Amen. 25th verse. Praise God. Well, before we do that, let's take a look over here at Matthew 17. Before we do that, let's take a look at Matthew 17 and 20. Keep your place there because I'm coming back. I'm coming back to it. Let's look at Matthew 17 and 20. Matthew 17 and 20. Faith had to be developed in, in, inside the servant as well to exercise the anointing that's given him? Yes. Now, to be fair, these apostles, had the Holy Spirit come yet? Had Pentecost happened yet? No. There wasn't even any dwelling. This was during oh, the Old Covenant, really, what was happening here. Paul goes that in even, even came uh, and indwelled in man yet. But look at the 20th verse. So Jesus said to them, because of your unbelief, for surely I say to you, if you have faith as a mustard seed, and you say to this mountain, move from here to there, and it will move, and nothing will be impossible for you. However, this time does not come up but by prayer and fasting. Are there some things in our life that maybe strongholds have developed and we need to pray and fast over? Yes. Amen. And that's why in January 4th, we're, we're starting off our year with prayer and fasting. So if, we've got, if we haven't fully received our healing... What are we going to put in our fair prayer and fasting list? Complete healing. Praise God, whatever it is. That's going to be our fasting and prayer list. Complete healing. Amen? Amen. Praise God. Let's go back over here to Mark 9. As we work to our closing here. Mark 9. And we'll look at Mark 9 and 25. Mark 9 and 25, when Jesus saw that the people came running together, he rebuked the unclean spirit, saying it, deaf and dumb spirit, I command you to come out of him and enter him no more. 26 verse, then the spirit cried out, convulsed him greatly and came out of him, and he became as one as dead. Now, that's what happened to me. When I was there with that part individual uh, in the critical care unit, they became limp. As just like they had died. So that many, so that many said he is dead. But Jesus took him by the hand and lifted him up and he arose. In other words, what happened here is Jesus spoke to the situation. He spoke to it. He spoke to that mountain. He spoke to that challenge. Let's look over here at uh, Mark 11, 22. Just a couple of chapters over. Mark 11, 22. Mark 11, 22. So Jesus answered and said to them, Have faith in God. We is it, How do we get our miracle? By having faith in the Word. Isn't God the Word? Mm -hmm. Amen. Whether that's a rhema word or whether that's a written word. We have faith in that Word... That's the beginning point to receive our miracle. We have faith in the Word. Remember the person that wanted to get his servant healed and he came to God, Jesus? And he said, uh, I know if you speak the Word, my servant will be healed. And he was marveled. He said, I haven't even seen faith in Israel like that. Among, in other words, I'm among believers. <laughs> He's a foreigner. He got more faith than that. That was a, that was a, that was a, 
a, uh, an indictment of the Israelites. And he said, it's according to, your, according to what you said. And he was healed that hour. Amen? Amen. You've got to have faith in the word. 23rd verse. For surely I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea, and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that those things he says will be done, he will have whatever he says. Isn't that what Jesus did? Mm -hmm. huh? Then he, he spoke to the mountain of that person's situation, didn't it? And they believed it. Did he go back and say, well, let me bring up what the psychiatrist said, or, the, or my medical doctor said, or psychologist said, or my counselor said. Is that what he got into? No. He believed in what the word said. That's it. Bam, I don't care what your report says. I'm healed. Well, look, I'm looking at the report right here. You're, 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 I, well, that's fine. That, I, you know, I appreciate you. God gave you. I mean, I, 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 I'm glad I have you. But I'm telling you, I'm healed. It, we, it has become so deep rooted within us. We have to have faith in the word. We've got to speak to the mountain. And when the mountain is spoken to us, we've got to receive that word. I want you to write this down. We're talking about the miraculous. We're talking about experience God's miracle working power in our lives, in our business, in our finances, in our jobs, in our, for our healing, in our relationships, whatever it is. All right. We have to be, we have to be, I want you to write this down. We have to be so full of faith. That there isn't room, we have to be so full of faith, we have to be so full of faith that there isn't room in our heart for anything else. We have to be so full of faith that there isn't room in our heart for anything else. If our business is supposed to, God gave us his business and it's supposed to prosper, that's what's got to be in our heart in abundance. And defeat and failure is not an option. Amen? Amen. Now, did Jesus, when he was ministering to the boy, did he go into a dialogue with, with the father? Well, you never know if God will do it. I mean, we can pray. It may happen, it might not. <laughs> You never know what God's going to do. <laughs> Did he get into that? No. He addressed the, the situation. God gave him revelation. It's unbelief. It's the problem here. That's why they can't get it. Fully get it. And the man immediately repented, didn't he? Help. He repented right away. With, so we know that there can be blockage of why we can't receive. But we got to repent of that which is causing us a problem. Whatever's caused that unbelief, the unbelief has got to go. And we got to exchange it for what? Belief. That's how we're going to get the supernatural grace. Praise God. And what we got to understand is you look back here at Mark 11. And it says, so, uh, 22nd verse again. So Jesus answered and said to them, have faith in God. For surely I say, whoever said this mountain, be removed and cast into the sea, and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that those things he says will be done, he will have whatever he says. Therefore, I say to you, whatever things you ask when you pray, believe you receive them, and you will have them. Now, the, the sisters here know uh, about giving, conceiving and giving birth. So it's hard for us as guys to relate that as much, not for me, because I, I have to labor and give birth as well in the Word. So the sisters can really relate to me more than the guys can when you're laboring in the Word. When you get some, when you, so what is he saying here? G, Mary conceived the baby Jesus by faith Amen. in her womb. And then there was a gestation period, and then she gave birth to the promise. Well, that's what happens to us spiritually. So when we receive our healing, if it's not totally manifested, we know that it ain't, it's God perfect. There ain't no areas that God need to change. <laughs> we, don't go to God and say, you need to change because I can't receive. There ain't no, he ain't, he ain't perfect. No. 
We say, Lord, show me where I need to change. Just like this brother did. He asked for help. Help me with my unbelief. Help me. Show me where I need to make adjustments. Because God is perfect. And so we need to adjust. And then we realize that if it hasn't fully manifested right away, we're pregnant with it. Now, my sisters can relate to that, being pregnant. You're pregnant with it. Oh, yeah. I'm pre and, and, and when you receive it, by faith, I used to tell people when I pray for them, if it didn't happen right away, I say, well, you, you may feel in your spirit region of your body, you know, kind of your abdomen, you may feel a little heavier there. <laughs> now, it's, it's not anything material, it's spiritual. That's where your spirit is at because you're, you've been impregnated with it. Now, you keep walking it out and you'll give it full birth. Amen. Praise God. Okay, write this down. Let's see, we're kind of closing here. Write this down. We are expecting. Miracles to occur. We are expecting miracles to occur. Now we're going to close on this texture. We are expecting miracles to occur. Let's turn over to uh, John, the 20th chapter. And we're going to close on this. John 20. John 20. And we're going to look at the 3rd through the ninth verse. John 20 and 3 through 9. John 20 and 3 through 9. And this here comes within the context of Jesus' resurrection. John 20 and 3 through 9. John 20, the Gospel of John, the 20th chapter, and the 3rd through the 9th verse. And we're going to close on this. John 30. If you're there, say amen. 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 Praise God. Uh, Peter therefore went out and the other disciple, the other disciple is John, the apostle John, and were going to the tomb. So they both ran together and the other disciple outran Peter. Who were outran Peter? John did. The apostle John did. He's excited. You know, John, John was the apostle of love, right? You know, the apostle of love. I ran Peter and came to the tomb first. And he, stooping down and looking in, saw the linens clothes lying there. Yet he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came following him and went into the tomb. And he saw the linens clothes lying there and the handkerchief that had been around his head. Not lying with the linen cloths, but folded together in a place by itself. Then the other disciple who came to the tomb first, went in also, talking about John, and he saw, and what? Believe. Believe. For as yet they did not know the scriptures that he must rise again from the dead. He, John believed it before he even had the word on it. His belief was really out there. John, John was, he believed. Because he was with Jesus, he believed. Well, it, it's something good. I know he probably lied. Oh, wow, he got the word. He is alive. Praise God. What? You know, the Lord has spoken into my spirit. I believe it right away. So, one of the things is Apostle John provides a good example within this context. Apostle John was quick to believe. He was not a skeptic. You know, he didn't get into, you know, you watch some of these programs on television, all this analysis. You know. Well, maybe somebody took the body, or he didn't get into all of that. What did he, when he didn't see it, what did he, what did he immediately do? He believed immediately. He didn't get into a lot of skepticism. Skeptic, there is, in the kingdom of God, there is no place for skepticism. Amen? Yeah. If God says it, that settles it. John was quick to repent. He was quick to repent. He was quick to believe, quick to repent, and he was quick to yield to the Holy Spirit. John was quick to believe, quick to repent, and quick to yield to the Holy Spirit. Who wrote the last book of the Bible? John. Apostle John. Who was the only apostle that didn't get killed? John. John. Apostle John. He lived out his, he lived to be. Uh, he died of old age. He was known as the apostle of love. So. It doesn't matter whether it's eyesight. It doesn't matter whether it's a kidney situation. It doesn't matter where it's a, a hearing situation. 
It doesn't matter whether it's a liver situation. It doesn't matter whether it's a brain impairment. All of that can be healed and restored. Miraculously. Amen? Amen. Amen. Praise God. But it's up to us to believe. We have to believe. Just like that sister who went to the doctor and kept telling her all these reports or went to the counselor, all these reports. No, 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 no. You don't understand. I don't, that doesn't come under. I'm not affected by that. As God's children, we have to stay in course with believing. But what the, what the word it says, if God has told us, then we believe it and we receive it. Amen? Amen.